And now, welcome to Like a Boss, insights with influencers, creatives, online entrepreneurs, and badasses like you. Here is your hostess, Heather Havenwood, Chief Sexy Boss, helping you rise to the top. Are you a coach, consultant, small business owner, or online entrepreneur? Do you want to significantly grow your business, triple your list, and double your sales conversions? If the answer is yes, then launching a podcast is the next step. You see, being an expert in your field, having a website is no longer enough to be noticed in today's marketplace. I call it the influencer effect. Being an influencer is the key. You see, people do business with people they know, like, and trust, and having your own podcast helps people to connect with you. If you're interested in having me help you launch your own podcast, grow your influence, and promote your business, then go to InfluencerGrowthFormula.com. That's InfluencerGrowthFormula.com, and let me help you rise to the top. Hey everyone, this is Heather Havenwood, and welcome to the next edition of Like a Boss Insights with influencers, entrepreneurs, and badasses like you. I'm super excited today because we're going to be talking to another badass, talking about your money talk, your money talk, because it's all about your money talk. Mindset is completely connected to the money in your bank account, and that is so true. So I'm super excited today to have another badass woman on the line, which is, um, becoming better and better. I'm getting more and more women actually that I'm interviewing, which is super fun for me. And especially since my, you know, sexy boss and really empowering women. So I want to introduce you to Angela Anderson. Are you there? Hi, Heather. And hi, like a boss listeners. Hey, yeah. I'm so excited about that. You're in Colorado right now. I'm in Austin, Texas. I just got back from a week in Aspen. It was just so gorgeous there. Um, I absolutely love it. And I really miss being there. So I'm super excited that you're kind of transmuting Colorado into my space here today. So that's, so thank you for that. So let me share with people who you are. Angela Anderson with over 20 years in personal development and entrepreneurship in the areas of subconscious mind, reprogramming, health, and fitness and business. Angela shows people how real change happens in their mind. As an advanced psych Dash K facilitator. We're going to learn more about that. And former employee at the Psych Dash K Center International, a leader in subconscious reprogramming. Angela teaches people how to leverage proven neuroscience and mind management tools to unlock and transform their self limiting, self sabotaging, and negative beliefs about money. Woo! And by the way, I have this just for you. I have my little, can you see that? Money! <laughs> Yeah, I have, actually, I have this all the time here, but when I use it, Angela, I feel like I'm like a kind of used car salesman. Like, come today and save money and buy the car, you know, like that. I just, anyway, it's my moment. Um, so let's talk about you, Angela. Tell us about you and your background. This looks like you actually worked at or, or employee of the company that created this. Yes. Yeah, so I was and still am actually a stay at home mom. And at that time, my children were really small. They weren't in school yet. And I needed to have some time where I could leave the house for a bit. And so I decided to do bookkeeping and start a bookkeeping business. And most people are like, what? And bookkeeping is actually in financial stuff was just really came really easy to me and actually felt like something that was relaxing for me to do, you know, switching the mommy brain. And so one of the clients that I got was Rob Williams, who is the originator of Psyche. And so I would be over at his house and we would be in a shared work office space and I'd be doing entries and doing books and things like that. And he was guesting on podcasts and, and doing events with Dr. Bruce Lipton, who is a leader in biology and science and epigenetics. And of course, he would spend a lot of time talking with me and teaching me about, about his work at the Psyche Center International. Uh, you, we all, you know, when we have a small company, right, we don't just want people to come work for us and, and not know about us. And, yeah. and uh, you know, you want to build kind of like a family. Mm -hmm. And so he spent a lot of time talking with me and teaching me about how my mind works, how all of our minds work and, and what really the truth is behind 
what we see and what we experience through our five senses and how we can change our experience by working with our subconscious mind. And so Psyche specifically is a set of tools and techniques and processes that are designed to work directly with your subconscious mind so that you can change the programs and have a different experience in life. So is it more like affirmations? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so not affirmations like I am wealthy, I am wealthy, I am wealthy, like affirmations. It's something else. Yes. So it does begin with what we would call an affirmation. Okay. But um, when, we, when we look at affirmation and when we look at repetition, which are two ways to reprogram your mind, we find that the conscious methods of doing things, journaling, affirmations, reading books, uh, self-help workshops, to-do lists, they don't always do what we need them to do. And cognitive psychologists have show, Heather, that only 5% of our day we're consciously aware of. And if we really sit down and look at our lives, uh, most of the time we're preoccupied with the past or the future. And so the, it bodes the question, well, what happens with the other 95% of our day? And that is what our subconscious mind is in charge of. So Psyche is what we do is we use muscle testing and we use whole brain integration techniques hmm. so that we can access that 75% of your mind that is really running the show and change those programs in there. Okay, so this is uh, really interesting. I just reread the book Power Versus Force, which talks about the body testing and kinesiology piece of our brain and tapping into that, uh, what I call, you know, like you said, 75%, but let's just, I always like the visualization, right? So you have an iceberg at the top, you see what you see, and then underneath the water, you actually get the big iceberg. It's huge, right? And that's like the 75% of whatnot. That's what Power Versus Force is talking about. That's actually what's running really the show in your brain and your mind. So Tell us what, how, uh, how you as a facilitator and certified in this, are you teaching a process over a period of a day, a week, eight weeks? How does this actually work? Yeah. So I am what they call a psyche facilitator and a preferred affiliate. So what I've done, Heather, is I've gone and I've taken all of the appropriate workshops to be able to work with clients and offer sessions. So it's similar as if you were to come to visit a professional for anything is we work together for an hour and we literally dive right into the tools and the techniques to change your beliefs. And so within an hour, we can change probably two to three limiting beliefs that you have. And so I don't, as a facilitator, I don't teach you how to do the processes, but you can learn them by attending a Psyche workshop, just like I did many years ago. Okay, got it. So this is, you're actually the doing of it. You walk in, so this is not a hypnotherapy session because I've done hypnotherapy and, and whatnot. It's, it's not, is it, let's talk about it. Sometimes you have to, to understand what something is, sometimes you have to like what it's not, right? So is it not a hypnotherapy session or... Right. It, it is not. Um, a hypnotherapy session often involves a lot of talking in the beginning. That way your therapist can kind of understand the ins and outs of your lives in some pivotal times. Yeah. And then you lay down on a table and they give, bring in a series of suggestions and, and you, you hope that you get into that theta mode, into that state of super learning so that then the new suggestions can be internalized by your subconscious. With Psyche, we spend about five minutes talking about your situation because what we found, again, with but going back to the science, is the way your mind works is it, it's not, it can be helpful to go back and find out, you know, the who, what, why, where, when, and how. Mm -hmm. But what we really want to do is be like, okay, what's going on in my, my life? How do I want things to be? And what are the beliefs that I need to have in order to get from point A to point B? I love that because I know myself, you know, on my own self, I've gone through a ton of personal development and a therapy and counseling. And, stuff. and it is like that. They're like, okay, tell me what's going on. I'm like, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. Cause I feel like if I'm talking about it, I'm adding more energy to it. It's like, look, I, this is the area. Um, I want to reprogram it. Let's go. You know what I mean? Versus like, okay, here's the, you know, um, I think now there's, there's a time in my life. I think other people that you have to feel like you would talk about it, talking therapy and, you know, getting it out helps. But what I'm hearing with your um, specific kind of process here that you're integrating, it's not about talk therapy at all. It's like, okay, here's the piece I want. Let's call it fixed for sake of conversation. Fixed or changed or altered or moved around. Let's dive in. Is that, is that right? 
Yep. It's cool. what's going on right now, what do you want, and what are the beliefs that you need to have in order to get you there. Cool. And then we begin muscle testing. We find out what's going on. Does your subconscious mind have this program? If it doesn't, we have, and this is another thing that's different from hypnosis and other types of therapies, is we have permission protocols because sometimes when what we think is a good idea isn't necessarily a good idea. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. And so we have permission protocols, and then we go through the change process. Hmm. This is interesting to me personally because, I mean, like I said, I've been through a ton of personal development. I've been through hypnotherapy, EDMR work, counseling, therapy, all kinds of stuff. Um, I definitely have a belief of like some, I'm broken, I, and I'm very clear. I have that whole thing going on because of a very uh, young programming, even though, you, you know, try to alter it my own self and whatnot. So you know, this just sounds like a different kind of modality, but the muscle testing is interesting. Inside the process, why are you muscle testing and the permission side? Those are two new pieces I've never heard before put together. Yeah. So we use muscle testing as a biofeedback mechanism to directly communicate with your subconscious mind because your subconscious controls all of your motor functions. It also is a storehouse of your values, attitudes, and belief and program behaviors. So it's an excellent and direct way instead of us having to spend thousands of dollars to hook your brain up to a machine and, you know, read it, we can just muscle test. And what it really does, Heather, is it, it, it it measures the energy frequency in your body. So, for example, I live out in the country, and if I turn my head, then sometimes my in, my phone call will drop if I'm on my cell phone. So it's we're talking about signal strength. So that's what muscle testing essentially does, is if, if there is some kind of stress in your body, then the signal strength is going to be reduced. So if you were to say out loud, I make a billion dollars a year, and your subconscious mind is like, yeah, right. <laughs> like, who are you kidding? Then your mu the signal strength is going to be reduced, and you're going to test weak on that. So that is that's okay. that's why it's just a direct way for uh, for muscle testing to tell us: do we go right? Do we go left? Do we turn around? Do we, you know, how how is it that we're going to move about in the session? Okay, let's go down that road. Let's just pick that one because that one's interesting. So, uh, someone's like. I make a, let's go a million dollars a year or $2 million a year. So then you do muscle testing on your hands. How do you do that? Okay. So in an in-person session, and I have yeah. an office in Salida, Colorado, we actually hold out your arm and do a gentle press on your arm. So it's not like a real hard press. If you think about the weight of an apple or maybe two apples, that's about as much as we use. And it's in, it's incredible, the signal strength on how your arm will go up or it'll stay firm. And we do some pre-tests. That way you can really feel because it's not about me saying, oh, Heather, you tested strong. It has nothing to do with what I think. This is about you and uh, making sure that you feel really confident with what your results are. So we do some pre-tests like my name is Heather, my name is George, you know, I like stepping in dog poo, <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, I like brownies, and so we do very simple things so that you can feel, oh, this is what it's like when my subconscious mind is on board, Yeah, yeah when okay. something's true, when something's false, then we get into the belief of I deserve, I am worthy, I am capable of making a million, two million dollars a year. Mm. And so when you find one that's weak, let's, let's go, let's just kind of go down this path. I'm just going to make it up. Uh, maybe that the million dollars a year I deserve to make a million dollars a year and you find that person's weak. What would you do with that scenario? Then we say, then we get permission because then if you're there, if you're hiring me, so that you, if you feel like the belief that uh, is you deserving is somehow you, you were told when, uh, by your grandma that you can have seconds <laughs> at the dinner table, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 and, yeah. You know, and that's translated into so many things like, oh, I can't have more than my fair share. If you really have noticed and boiled it down to, I think I need to have that belief in order to move powerfully forward with my money story, then that's when we say, you know, okay, can we, is it safe and appropriate to make this change. And so mm -hmm. then we do is another it muscle test. And appropriate to make, and do you ask the body? I mean, do you ask the, per, like, you ask the body, is it safe and appropriate to make this change? Yes. Interesting. Okay. All right. I love that. This is really great. Just before we go to the next step, because we're going to three steps to reprogram your money code right now, is in the second step. I love that you asked permission. That is something I've never seen before inside of um, the coaching realm or the counseling or therapy realm. 
That's fascinating. You literally are asking permission of the body, right? And I have gotten a no with some clients before. And yeah, what do you do there? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, so they hired you. They're, here they are. They're like, I want to change this. You find the belief system. And then you ask the body, the body's like, no. <laughs> like, yeah. No. Session's over. I mean, what? Wow, what do you yeah. do? Yeah. Then we sit down and we say, okay, there's a higher priority. There's a higher priority going on right now. So let's talk about this. And they always know, usually within a few seconds, if they say, I don't know. And I say, well, if you think you, if you, if you think you could know, what could it be? (laughs) And then they, they always come up with something. They're like, you know what? Honestly, before I feel like I deserve it, I need to know that I have the time, like that I have the space and the support if that's really what's going on with me, Angela. So sometimes it's often just tweaking the words and the values in order to really get to the root of the matter. Interesting. And then you can go into permission to change that. Okay. That's really fascinating. The permission. Um, have you ever come across something that just like, it's totally different. Like it doesn't come from money. I'm, okay. And then, then the no comes up. And they find out that really it's health issues or something. Like, have you ever had anything that's just like way off the mark? Where Meaning they came in for something and then like discovered something totally different? Yeah. Yeah. Back pain, um, addictions, uh, alcohol, food, uh, health practices, uh, self-worth. It's all tight. You know, your money code, how I say it, is a, is a set of very powerful very powerful programs that yes control how much you can create and make and how you manage it but but underneath the veil is about your self-worth mm. and do you deserve are you valuable enough do you have the time do you have access to the resources do you have the support are you smart enough mm. and so then re- let's go with the one smart so then then, then what's the next step from there? I'm not even going to try to figure it out. What, what would you, I'm, not, I'm like, I'm not the practitioner here. You know, I'm yeah. not certified. <laughs> so then the next step is actually to make the change. And this is where people get like, oh, they, you know, they put their hooves out and they're like, wait a minute. Um, because <laughs> we're so, yeah, we're so used to just talking about things and getting excited about good ideas, but not much really changes. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I think that, I think the human brain, doesn't enjoy change on an, on an overall basis. Yeah. And so this, my goal is when is to get you as quick as we can into the change process. Mm -hmm. And what that is about Heather. And again, this is, we could go down rabbit holes and have 10 other podcasts about how this works. And, and what it is, is, is we create a whole brain state. And this is a state of super learning. This is a state that you were in when you were zero to seven years old and just being programmed like a sponge. Okay, this is what clinical hypnotherapy does. This is what some of the other modalities that you, you know, you've tried, that you've done, that you've gotten benefits from, and other, our listeners are as well. Same thing, but we just get you into it a lot quicker, very quick. Um, and we use whole brain integration activities that is okay. going to open up it, your, your brain, any blockages you have, and connect your right and left hemispheres. Now, this is where, again, if I, if I had the machine, I could connect you and we could see that it's working. And we have studies in at the Psyche Center International where we did studies and we show where the, the where your brain connects and where parts light up. So it's when you do that whole brain integration activity where you engage all so many parts of your mind. It basically all all it is is it induces that state of super learning, and then your subconscious mind is receptive to receiving that those, that new set of instructions, mm-hmm. and then it internalizes them and it makes it an automatic part of your life. Just like when you eat a salad. Yeah. And you don't have to say, okay, digestive system, now do this with the lettuce. Now turn this into the poop. And you know, you yeah. know, I don't have to do Happens. any of that. Right. You eat, you go on with your day, you either, you know, and we all know if I eat this, I feel like crap. I don't sleep well. If I eat this, then I don't have such a, you know, a, I don't need to get a Starbucks at three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm hmm. Same <laughs> thing. It's like feeding your mind nutrients. We feed it mm. nutrients. It, munches on them and it usually only takes two minutes maybe at the very most it's very quick and then you're done is it literally reprogramming or is it just giving it nutrients to is it reprogramming yes 
Interesting. Okay. So this is a machine or can someone do this virtual? Virtual. So it's a little different how I describe the muscle testing. It's a little different when we do it virtually, but it still works like a charm. Yeah. So what are some results you've seen in your time? How long have you been doing this? Well, I started learning the techniques about 10 years ago, and I did them with myself. And you know how you, you know, you have friends over and you do the Ouija board kind of thing. You know, we would, I would just do it with friends on occasion, and their life was a totally change. And it'd be like, oh, that's cool. You know, it worked. Yeah, I knew the session would work. And then I was, I became listed on the Psyche Center International website, and I'd get some random clients here and there. And I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll do a session. And finally, it dawned on me a couple years ago, like, I need to do this. And, you know, we did have different phases in our lives. And I finally realized, okay, it's time to really step into this and go for it. Nice. So I've been, yeah, I've been practicing it on a, on a con very consistent professional level with many people over the past year and a half. Nice. So, you know, the results, a lot of my clients, and I'll be totally transparent, is right when they're done with the session, they look at me and they're like, that's it. <laughs> because once again, our conscious mind loves to overcomplicate, loves yeah. to overthink, yeah, loves yeah. to yeah. think that it's going to be yeah. more difficult than it actually is. I remember yeah. when I first did um, EDMR work, I had done um, a ton of research about it, and there was a lot of life changing stuff. And but when I went, and it was this super simple process, and EDMR is very different than what you guys do it's for something else. And I, I thought I left there going, um, I just paid her what to like, I just sat there, <laughs> you know, however, she said, okay, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> like, there's going to be a bunch of stuff that's changing the next week. And she didn't exactly tell me that like enough in about 24, 40 hours on my calling her and like in tears. I'm like, what the hell is happening? You know, she's like, oh, it's working. You know? So, um, my point is that sometimes and in a lot of cases, especially when you're dealing with, in my experience with brain stuff, sometimes the most powerful stuff is the most simple. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. You know, yeah. It's not, like, it's not like if you think about how we are programmed, it was probably simple. Like, you know, I remember when I was like, I remember something very specific when I was younger that happened. I remember that everyone was saying, I think I was sitting on the floor. My mom gave me um, a wooden stick. And <laughs> this tells you the air I was in, a wooden stick and a pan. My job was just play with pan. <laughs> Here, play with pots and pans. That's your, you know, like, and then it was an adult talking conversation. So I overheard it, obviously, because I'm sitting on the floor, the carpet, and then like I pick it up, right? So my point is that that was a simple process that we got programmed. So sometimes it is simple to unprogram, you know? Yeah. Happen, yeah. Like, we that reminds me 10 hours or something <laughs> that reminds me Heather can I share I my yeah. uncle has a pretty fat belly and when I was a kid he told me uh, there was a watermelon growing inside because he ate the seeds <laughs> and uh, it's not true but I believed it and I still just can't really eat the seeds I just still don't do it right because you're like I don't want the fat belly right I, <laughs> I wouldn't either I'd be like see ya I just had a watermelon yesterday too which is funny um yeah, I would be the same. I get it. Yeah, it's like funny stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like it's we get programmed pretty easily, you know, so why wouldn't it be simple to uh, unprogram it? Okay, so let's talk about some results. If you don't mind, you have to give names or anything, but can you give some examples of some results? That yeah, have? yeah, definitely. So um, a lot of my clients, they come and we work on beliefs such as if I make more money, then more will be required of me. That's a really Way big one for people. Right. I'm looking to see if I have that. Interesting. So, okay. yeah. And, you know, what that means is, okay, more taxes, more responsibility, more clients, more, more time working, more time managing my team. And it, it makes sense oh, right. when, we, when we think about, wow, maybe I am stopping myself from growing and making multiple six figures because it's, I just don't know. I'm one, I'm one person. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. So that was a big belief that was going on with her. And just after two sessions, and granted, Heather, this was summertime and she has small kids at home. Just after two sessions, she landed a series of speaking gigs that it, it, it seemed effortless for her. She had old clients coming back. She had new clients coming, booked out with a waiting list. She took more time off than she ever has. And she even describes it is that it was so simple and so easy and effortless. It was almost funny. 
and she didn't really change anything on the outside. She didn't change her message. She didn't change her marketing. She didn't go hire a designer to get a new website. It was just changing some of these deep rooted beliefs about mm -hmm. what more money would mean for her. Mm, interesting. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. Well, that's a big one. Um, what about anything to do with, do you have people that come for money or weight loss or addictions and you help with things outside of just money? Yes. So it's, you know, you know how it is in the online world. It is important to niche ourselves and have a specialty. Yeah. And I picked money just because I've always loved it. <laughs> I love making it and spending it and managing it. It's just, uh, it's one of my favorite toys, shall we say. And then I also know it's a big can of worms for people. So um, it's something that, you know, when you do something with ease, it's really fun to help other people turn on to that. Yeah. Uh, something that is so difficult like money for a lot of people. But yes, you know how it is in business is we do have a net where when you think about limiting beliefs, um, attracting a, a partner, uh, attracting your next best work opportunity, becoming more confident, um, getting to a point where you can, you know, be invited to get to speak on the big stage. Um, yeah, all of that. Um, it, it boils down to the secret of life, of life being belief. So if there's a belief that you realize, wait a minute, I don't have to see this in black and white in any area of your life. Absolutely. I can help you with that. Yeah. I mean, I think we've all, my, myself gone through personal development courses and money courses and, um, you know, uh, books and things like that on money or, whatnot, but doesn't always mean it's going to change or break the code that's in your head or the belief system in your head. And we can, we can watch Tony Robbins and say it's all about belief and still knowing that doesn't make a difference. It's, I guess my point. So knowing that we have a belief, knowing that it's running the show, knowing, 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 knowing doesn't mean it alters. You know, sometimes what you focus on expands versus what you focus on moves away. So it's a catch, it's a catch 22, right? Cause there's a focus on what expands. It's also like, you have to be able to face your demons too, but face, face the beliefs to be able to change it. There's, you know, so it, it's a catch 22. I think what I'm hearing with your specific modality is that you're finding it, right? You're finding it. And then you're just, are you, are you erasing the belief or are you just redoing the belief? Which one do you think you're doing? It's like when you have your phone and you've got an app on it and you have that notification that your app needs to be upgraded. And I always remember Rob telling me, Angela, you never want to completely erase the file because we all have a file of thou shall not kill. But there's times where you're, you might need to kill in order to protect yourself or save your life. So you don't want to erase the file. You want to override the file. Interesting. What's the difference so, there? Why not erase it? I mean, obviously killing is obvious, but in the, in the world of money or health and wellness, why not just kill it? That I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say, I don't know. Um, other cool. than for when I was explained to me, I realized that we, we all have what we have inside of us and it's, um, with psyche, it's a matter of, of making those upgrades. Yeah. Because like, for example, there are times where you are going to want to be careful with your money, right? You might not you might, you probably shouldn't be super generous at times. And so we want to learn also with, well, as we make these upgrades, the best explanation that I can come up with, with my own experience is how to be discerning. Mm -hmm. And something that I, that I've seen in my life as, as I have become more successful with, with my business, sometimes people perceive you um, as having like some kind of position of power and authority. And then that triggers their authority response. And so I don't know if I said it on this podcast or if I told you recently, I've, I've, I've been involved in some lawsuits recently. Holy heck, like it's the newest thing that I've had to learn how I'm going to deal with in my life. And I really mm -hmm. believe it's because I'm, I've gotten bigger and I'm attracting more people and maybe I made some decisions way too hastily. And so now I'm learning, okay, you know, I, I need to be more careful with mm -hmm. how I do things. So, so that's why I say we don't want to erase because we always still, we, we, we're humans and we live in a relative world. 
And we've got yeah. to be able to use all of the different aspects of our skills. So I love the fact that you talked about said lawsuits. And the reason I say that is because um, I'm into right now middle one spin like four years. So uh, I think that one of the things, even just speaking it, I've had some, it was recently the last two months I I said something like, oh yeah, if it's a lawsuit of it. And they're like, oh, what you do? You know, I'm like, you do realize there's a ton of lawsuits that go around all the time. <laughs> that's like something to do with right or wrong or, you know, but that's that automatic. It's a perception. It's a judgment. And it's, it, for me, I was like, did I do something wrong? You know, no, it's just part of business. You know, I think that that's, the, that was on them. That was not my judgment. You know, it's just something that's going on right now for myself and, you know, car accident and whatever. You know, it's, it's a process. It's four years, been a while. Um, I think that I think sometimes we take on people's judgments too. You know, I went through bankruptcy in 2007. I mean, got wiped out. Uh, some people who are around during that time in Florida, they go, ah, yeah, me too. Or yeah, yeah, I get it. My half my neighborhood did. But then some people who I've shared that with who lived in the Midwest, like, oh my God. I'm like, dude, did you know this thing called recession in 2007, 2008? Did you not know about it? Because half the, how all of Florida and Nevada wasn't like bankruptcy and foreclosure. So it's also, I, I, you know, I'm just glad you brought something up like that because I think part of it is us reprogramming what happened between zero and seven. But sometimes it's also that shame is for myself that our family or friends are just people that we met off the street. For me right now, one of the ones I get still, and I don't know if I've taken on as a program or not, I don't know, but I get it all the time. Like, oh my God, you're pretty and nice and cute. Why are you not married? I'm like, because I'm smart. I don't know. So and that's my response to them. They're always like, I'm like, well, they literally I've had, I mean, this happened just what a week ago I was on my way to Vegas. And I literally had this guy like, wow, you know, you're smart. You're pretty. You're, you're sexy or this, you're this, and you don't have any kids. You're not married. What's wrong? I'm like, well, who said something's wrong? <laughs> you know? So I think it's also sometimes programs are pushed on us and it takes something to say, um, nothing's wrong. You know, I'm actually okay. And potentially consider it's a choice and potentially consider there's other things in play other than you don't know. So I, I think what you're dealing with the reprogramming, my question to you is once you get out of the office or once you get out of that, do people deal with, do people deal with what I call being reprogrammed again? Or is it once it's changed, it's changed. A lot of things, once it's changed, it's changed. Cool. Because uh, when I work with clients, I work with them in a couple different ways. One is if you want to dip your toe in the water and, and change some beliefs and experience it, we can do a session or two, no problem. But, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, Heather, and neither was our lives. And so, of course, I work with people over a longer period of time. And in that program, we go, we get to core beliefs, those core beliefs of I want to live, I want to die. The universe is a friendly place. I love myself. I hate myself. And we've identified pairs of core beliefs, 13 pairs of them that, Heather, if you were operating from I am you know, a worthy and capable person, for example, when someone, which obviously you are, when someone says, you know, you're pretty, you're sexy, you're smart, how come you're not married? We don't then internalize it and cannibalize ourselves. We say, oh, this is interesting information. Look at what this person, where they're coming from. We don't say there's something wrong with me. We say, yeah, okay, that's my reality, and maybe one day I'd like to do this or have this, but it doesn't mean that I'm flawed as a human being. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we're always going to have really challenging experiences. It goes back to, again, how do we react to them and how do we see them? Do, they, do we see them as I'm bad, I'm good, or is it just like, wow, I just got a lot of information right now, and now I, I get to decide how I want to see this. I get to choose how I want to react or not react to this. And mm -hmm. boy, honey, I have hit that delete button a lot. <laughs> I hit the delete button on text oh, and conversation. I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Because if I respond to this, it's just going to get more. The entanglement is going to be even deeper. And that's not my goal here. I'm, mm -hmm. I want peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not our job to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? and it, yeah. And it boils down to your self-worth mm -hmm. and, and your beliefs, like you said. So, yeah, I agree. We can get programmed. Like I was a health and fitness professional before I turned money code reprogrammer. And 
I, when I got in the business, I was like, what the hell? You know, these, these people who are teaching fitness classes and like working their butts off, they're only getting $25 an hour. Like this is, and you know, the, 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 as an industry, as a collective consciousness, we can tend to inherit some really bad, um, some self limiting uh, beliefs with uh, colleagues and in our own industries. But yeah. it's, you know, it's, it clings on a lot more when it can, when it has a partner belief inside of you that says I'm not worthy and deserving, then it can, it can either cling on more or you can rise mm -hmm. above it when you have those core beliefs in place that you are worthy and deserving. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. And I'm thinking my little money here. Um, I have my little money things just for you. Uh, this has been interesting where, so someone's like, Hey, I'm very interested. I want to raise my hand to work with you specifically. Where can they find you to have that happen? Yeah. So go to AngelaAnderson.life. And like I said, there's two ways you can work with me. If you are actively looking to work with an experienced professional over a longer period of time to have a complete overhaul and create that true wealth that you've always wanted in your life, then schedule a Be Rich Now complimentary session to talk with me about working together. Now, this is uh, right for you if, like I said, if you're actively looking for a professional and if you're ready to make a a, a solid investment in yourself. Okay, so we can get on the phone and talk about that first. Otherwise, if you want to dip your toe in the water, you want to change simple beliefs, you want to make sure that Psyche is going to work for you and that, that you are going to make some changes, then you can just go ahead and register yourself for some a la carte sessions. And that's all located on my website, AngelaAnderson.life as well. So one or the two. AngelaAnderson.life. I love that. Um, that's pretty interesting. Well, this has been fun to go, go through the process. Can you just restate the three steps to reprogram your money consciousness? Yes. So look at your life. Look at how you want it to be. Decide the beliefs that you need to have in order to get there. And then do get into that muscle testing, get permission and commitment, and get into that state of super learning and whole brain integration to make those upgrades with your subconscious. And actually, here's a fourth bonus step, and it, the last one is to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's true. Celebrate. Yeah. Celebrate. Great. Yeah, a little happy dance, virtual high fives. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had to say the moment you said that, because I was sharing the story about the, the gentleman, many gentlemen who said this to me about the marriage thing. I so want to say to them, you know, I actually celebrate that I, I'm not married because almost like five, five of my friends right now have just finished a massive divorce because I'm not in a massive divorce. I'm not saying all marriage is in that way. Right. And, you know, just listening to their stories and things like that. It's like, whew, wow, <laughs> it, it can be tough out there. So I think sometimes it's okay to celebrate that you are where you're at, but also where you're not at whatever that looks like. And just because society says you should be a certain way or your friends or maybe your family, whatever that looks like, doesn't mean that it's wrong. You know, it could be just right for you, you know, and, but muscle test that for myself, it's, it, it's an alignment for me not to be married. It's an alignment for me to be where I'm at. That could alter tomorrow. It could be altering next week. That's just the state I'm in. I have intentions elsewhere. So I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Um, I'm going to ask you how old are your kids now? They're 11 and 13 now. Wow. That's yeah. cool. That's awesome. I was out of the house. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you're like five more years, <laughs> Eight, seven more years. Right? <laughs> countdown. Honey, that's a countdown clock. What's that for? When you leave? <laughs> <Love you. laughs> when you get to pay rent. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, they're like, what? I actually knew a parent that did that. Yeah, absolutely. And like, was I like, oh, that's how many more days left until you start paying rent? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Can't wait. Woo. Celebration. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate your time today. Seriously. Thank you so much, Angela. And just tell them one more time where your website is. Yes. So Angela Anderson dot life. And my last name is spelled S O N ah, dot life. Fun. Angela Anderson dot life. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. This is Heather Havenwood with Like a Boss, Insights with Influencers, Entrepreneurs, and Badasses Like You. Please check us out at, at um, heatherhavenwood.com as well as Pandora. Just, just got, I got approved for Pandora. We're super excited about that. Spotify, iHeart, oh no, celebration. Um, iHeart, Spotify, Amazon, Alexa. 
and uh, many other places, Roku, as well as, of course, YouTube. All right, when this is Heather Havenwood. Check us out, heatherhavenwood.com. Bye. Are you a coach, consultant, small business owner, or online entrepreneur? Do you want to significantly grow your business, triple your list, and double your sales conversions? If the answer is yes, then launching a podcast is the next step. You see, being an expert in your field, having a website is no longer enough to be noticed in today's marketplace. I call it the influencer effect. Being an influencer is the key. You see, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And having your own podcast helps people to connect with you. If you're interested in having me help you launch your own podcast, grow your influence, and promote your business, then go to InfluencerGrowthFormula.com. That's InfluencerGrowthFormula.com. And let me help you rise to the top. Thank you for listening to Like a Boss, helping you rise to the top. Join Heather's Mastermind at InfluencerTribe.com, where she helps you become an influencer and dominate your field. Follow Heather Havenwood on Instagram. Interested in interviewing or scheduling a call with Heather? Go to CallWithHeather.com. For more, go to HeatherHavenwood.com.